Well, hi there. Centipedes are pound for pound probably the most terrifying animals on the planet. They are so cool and so horrifying. Centipedes, contrary to what their name would suggest, generally do not have 100 legs. What they have is one pair of legs per body segment. So if, if you look at a centipede, they've got a head and then they've got a series of segments going down the body and each one of them has one pair of legs. This is actually one of the features that distinguishes them from their relatives, the millipedes, which do not have a thousand legs, but they do have two pairs of legs per segment, whereas the centipedes only have one pair of legs per segment. Another big difference is one of my favorite things on any animal anywhere, and that is the toxicognaths, which is just a word you should work into any conversation you can. That's pretty much the reason I wanted to talk about centipedes, is because their front pair of legs, so on their first segment following the head, the legs on that segment are modified into hypodermic fangs, but they're actually legs and they are called toxicognaths. They're stinking rad. These animals are fast. They're really fast. And with that many legs, I guess it makes sense that they're fast. And they're very, very reactive. You touch them about anywhere on their body, they can wrap around on you and grab you with those mini legs and unleash a wide awake nightmare. I told you how scary it would be to be in the enclosure with a green tree frog if you were shrunken down to the size of a cricket. But these genuinely frighten me just at their current size. If I was the size of a feeder, oh the horror. So I guess the question, isn't whether or not this creature is the thing of nightmares, for it is, undoubtedly. However, is this nightmare the perfect pet nightmare for you? To help you figure this out, we are going to rank the giant centipede based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the giant centipede a score of zero out of five. You know all those videos of people walking around on top of skyscrapers and taking their picture? You can do that and not die. But have you ever seen the outtakes? In a very similar way, you can handle a giant centipede. But it's kind of like walking around with a vial full of nitroglycerin. They're high strung and volatile, and as long as absolutely nothing sets them off while you're handling them, everything will be okay. But it's extremely easy to set them off. The venom probably wouldn't kill you, though if you died, you wouldn't be the first. What you will experience will be some instant and horrifying pain as the toxicognaths slashed through your flesh. And then some intense searing pain as the venom is injected into your body. Before you even consider picking one up, make sure you've fed them a few times, so you know what this looks like. Then ask yourself how much confidence you have that they will not at least attempt to eat your hand. On top of that, they're insanely fast. And you don't want the other members of your family finding out that you allowed a giant centipede to escape in the house when you recommend to them that they tuck their pants into their socks. I've even heard that having a few dozen pointy little legs, including two of them that inject medically significant venom, is highly unpopular with most spouses. Though centipedes are not as dangerous to handle as Lilith, it is more difficult to find a place that is safe to touch on a centipede than on a king cobra, and that's insane. When it comes to care, we give the giant centipede a score of 4 out of 5. Care is not too bad so long as you keep humidity at appropriate levels. Centipedes are generally prone to desiccation, which means they can dry out and die fairly easily. This is at least partially due to their tracheal system, which is the way that they breathe. Centipedes do not have lungs, and neither do insects for that matter, and they do not transport oxygen with their blood. Because of this, to get oxygen to their cells, they need to hand deliver all of the oxygen directly to every cell in their body, and they do this with a system of tubes that are called a tracheal system. Not only does this cause them to be a little more prone to drying out, it also limits the size 
to which a centipede can get. Uh, you know, it's, it's sort of difficult for those tubes to get deep, deep, deep inside of an animal. And this is why centipedes are no bigger than they are. The biggest ones are you know, not even quite the length of this tank. In the distant past, there were centipedes that were considerably larger, and the reason for this is just because there was more oxygen in the atmosphere at that time, and so that system didn't need to be as efficient to support a larger centipede. However, now their size is pretty much limited by the way that they breathe. They also lack a waxy cuticle, uh, like you would see on insects or arachnids, and this too drastically increases the rate at which they lose water. And so humidity is going to be stupendously important with these guys. They do have a cuticle, like insects and arthropods, and they grow through ectysis, which is through molting their exoskeleton in that same way too. When they're about to molt, that's a time when you need to be especially careful with humidity. They do pretty well at temperatures around where most people keep their homes, though a heat pad might be necessary if you let your house get too cool. One thing you're gonna need, and we're not demonstrating it here because we wanted to make sure you could see the centipede, but is make sure that you have pretty deep substrate. That will allow the centipede to burrow and find a microhabitat that has appropriate humidity. Also, the deep substrate won't dry out nearly as quickly as shallow substrate like this would. I wouldn't leave a, a centipede in something like this for more than a few hours. They definitely need access to water so they can rehydrate. And, and remember to mist fairly often, mostly to keep that, that soil at a proper humidity. They are going to eat a wide diversity of feeders, basically anything that moves and they can overpower, which is anything up to roughly the size that they are. I wouldn't recommend giving them something that big, but they're terrifying predators. And so a wide diversity of mostly insect feeders is ideal for them. We've actually got a whole video on some great insect feeders. They can eat everything there and a whole lot more. When it comes to hardiness, we give giant centipedes a score of three out of five. So we've already mentioned the biggest threat is just going to be desiccation, drying out. If you can avoid that, they're probably going to do pretty well for you. Another big thing is going to be escape. So kind of going back to care, whatever enclosure you have, and you notice this one has no lid, you need to make sure it has an excellent lid. Uh, very much like what you would need for a snake, because these are strong and they can fit through amazingly small spaces. Uh, in some ways, I would compare them almost to keeping an octopus which we've never covered, but let us know if you'd like for us to do that in the future. Generally, they should do pretty well for you as long as you keep humidity right and don't allow them to escape, but there are just a lot of things that could go wrong, so be careful. When it comes to availability, we give giant centipedes a score of three out of five. This one actually comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah. I went in there for one of the first times since this whole COVID thing has started because I was looking around at what all they'd have, and man, have they got some cool stuff. And I saw this, and I was like, holy cow. I have been eagerly awaiting the day when I could work the word toxicognaths into, like, every sentence possible. Toxicognaths! They carry a lot of awesome arthropods like this, as well as reptiles and tropical fish. They really have a big focus on planted terraria, so you should definitely check them out if you're in the area, or give them a call if you're looking for anything specific. Obviously, from time to time, you will find them in pet stores, which is rad and terrifying. They will be at most expos, if you know where to look, and they're generally available online. So that's probably the easiest place to find one, but they're around. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the giant centipede a score of five out of five. This is a Vietnamese giant centipede, and really, for such an incredible and terrifying animal, they're very affordable to buy not only the animal, but the entire setup that you would need for them. The enclosure, I mean, mostly you just need a lot of substrate. We've used a mix of eco-earth and sand and a little bit of sphagnum moss. That's a really good mix. That's, that's actually what we used in our terrarium build for crusted geckos, if you want to check that out in a little more detail. But that's a really good mix. Obviously, you need a lot more of it, though, than we have in here. And an excellent lid. This will not do. Make sure you have a water bowl and, you know, as an upfront cost, I'm not including this, but starting a dubia colony, these guys really like dubia roaches. As you can tell, because this one has been pounding dubia roaches, and I want to take just a moment to talk about that, because it's awesome. I've actually never kept a centipede this large. I've kept a lot of smaller centipedes, and you can't quite tell exactly what's going on. The toxic ognats usually look like fangs coming off of the head 
when you're looking at a smaller centipede, but when you're looking at this guy, in sort of the way that you can with our macro lens, which is possible thanks to our supporters at Patreon, you can really see that those are legs coming off of the first segment, and it's basically just using them to hold the prey while it eats away at it almost like a praying mantis with its mouth. Horrifying to the next level. Those, oh, it is so terrifying. Excellent. Love it. And no, I kind of want one. Kind of a whole lot. In conclusion, we give the giant centipede a score of three out of five. These things scare me to death. And I kind of want one. Should we get one for the reptile room? Please comment down in the comments. Should we get one of these? Because it is so cool and so horrifying. If what you want is a speedy, terrifying leg monster that can dry out fairly easily or escape and end your marriage, then a giant centipede just might be the perfect pet nightmare for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Thank you, Patreon. Where would we be without you? For real though, I don't know where we'd be without you. Thank you for all that you do for us. If you haven't already, please check out all of the awesome features that we have for our patrons at Patreon and consider supporting this channel because it does a lot, especially in these uncertain times, to help us increase the quality of our content and just move forward with this mission. So thank you, patrons. Thank you, any of you who are considering. And just thank you for being here. Oh, you're horrifying. I saw my reflection. <laughs> Wait, what just happened? <laughs> he psyched himself out. What happened? I was staring at the centipede and then I backed up and I could see this big... Just out of the corner of my eyes, I could see my, my reflection in my hands. And it was coming up over the top. And <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I have been waiting for this day because I have been so excited to work the word cart. I have been waiting for this day because I've been waiting for the opportunity to work the word cart. Ah, golly. <laughs> that, is a, that is a tongue twister. <laughs> I can't do it. Toxicognath, thoughts. Ah, I can't do it. One in a row. All right. Time two. Come on. Take two. Toxicognath, 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 toxicognath. Yes! <laughs>